Hey everyone, it's Sarah from Little Stab Studios, and it's a little bit late, so I'm not going to make this a super long video, but I did want to try and cover two topics that I saw brought up in different cross-stitching groups tonight, and I realized that these were different um, topics that I kind of took for granted, and... I think that even though they're small little things, they're both kind of worth going over. And that is going to be how to make a circular design so that your design will fit inside a hoop. And then the other one is going to be how to add a completely new thread to the program so that you can use it in the future. So to do that, we're going to go to new and we're going to go to choose your design size. Click OK. And I want to make sure it's in a square, so I'm going to hit keep ratio, and I think 120, no, a little bit less than 120. Just take it down to 112, and 14 count will give us an 8 inch square. Now, there is a way to do this without stitching, which is to use a oval mask, and this will put a slightly transparent, um, almost film, over the piece, but I like to do an actual circle on mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click none. Go with this slightly tan version. And you can't unfortunately pick a circle right from the grid shape. You do have to go with a square and just make sure that it is an actual square. So if you click keep ratio and you make sure that those two numbers are the same, you'll be fine. Unless, of course, you want to do an oval design. That's totally up to you as well. I have seen some really cool hoop bending recently, but I am not that talented. So now um, I like to usually go with a color that I'm not going to stitch with, with. So I wouldn't do black, but I do want something that's going to stand out. So maybe this brown gray would be a good choice. 3787, assuming I don't plan to use it. And then I'm going to go up here to shapes and click hollow, oval, or circle. Although some people like to do a solid one and just go over that. And then you want to go all the way right up to the corner, click, and then drag that over. And at first I didn't quite see how that was going to work, but wouldn't you know, <clears throat> you've got a circle that basically covers every part of this design. Now, of course, you can always play it safe. I'm going to hit Command Z and undo that. And if you want to give yourself a little bit of room, just so that you don't have your design right up by the borders so that it could fit into an 8 inch hoop comfortably, let's say we want to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we'll go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as well. And then we just keep the design from there. You're always going to be working from a corner. And then you don't have to worry about it being off. And then we just match up. We've got one, two, three, four, five here. We do have four up there, but it's only off by a pixel. And considering the size of the design, this would be perfect for starting out a circular design that will comfortably fit in an eight inch hoop and I would know I can draw all over inside here if I want to. I can center my text and it's all going to fit in comfortably. So that is how I prep my workspace for a circular design. I've done a few of them. They look lovely. So there's the tip. There. And the other thing I wanted to do was add in a floss color. So after we have done this, we're going to click on X so that we can have that gone and now we're going to go up to help it's a little bit funny I'm surprised they didn't put this into the palette area but if we go up to thread editor click that we're now going to see all of the thread families and one of the newer family of threads that I am very passionate about this is the DMC Diamant I believe they're trying to go for the French pronunciation, <laughs> maybe. Uh, they're basically the super shiny DMC um, 
They are 100% polyester, but they're really shiny, really nice, and they're a bit easier to work with than the satin threads, uh, probably because they're made in Japan. One thing I will pump up about Japan is we make some really nice um, metallic flosses. So DMC also seemed to have learned from that, and I think the only DMC flosses I have made in Japan are the diamant ones but they don't have those in yet they are pretty new i believe but let's say that i want to add one in and i would probably add it under satin because that makes me think of it and i actually did add one already i added it down here and i put it as a d because the color number is d225 for the kind of brown gold, I suppose. I had that one ready, but I do have another one right here. So if you want to add a whole new thread, you have not found it in the program at all, you pick a thread family to add it to. Unfortunately, I don't think you can create your own thread family. Maybe you can um, in a different way. But I just like to go with one that's similar that I would think of when I see it. And then it's going to, as soon as you click the little plus sign, pop up with a little menu here. And I've decided to go with DMD for all of my diamond ones. And then this one that I'm adding, <coughs> excuse me, a little horse gnome, is 168. This is a very silver looking thread. So I will call it, um, let's see, what colors do we have up here? Pearl gray. I think that sounds nice. I think I'll go with that. Light silver gray, just so that I know what I'm working with. And then, um, yeah, that's right, I was also... Months so that I know that they're the diamant ones. And then after you have the name and the number put in as you want them to appear, you actually get to go and pick the color. And it's going to be full black at first, and all you do is you click somewhere lighter, and then it's going to pop over there. And since I'm working with a metallic gray, I actually don't need to go over to the color sections at all. And I'm holding it, trying to see. I think this is pretty similar because I want to make sure it doesn't look white. I do love these threads, so if you haven't tried them, um, basically for the diamant ones, you use one strand for um, about one to two strands of satin floss. So you don't have to worry about separating the threads, which is so nice. And then they also have a larger version of this, which is slightly thicker and is for three to four strands. So just not having to separate the strands makes such a difference. I love it. So I think this looks good. Um, you can see they do have a white one, which is pretty similar, but mine is a little bit darker. And it is a really light silver. So I'm happy with that. And this is going to save it in the DMC satin family. So as soon as I click save, it's going to be like, are you sure you really want to do this? We don't want to edit where it's saving these at all. I cannot save it in a different folder. I have to save it in Mac Stitch in threads. If you mess with that, then your thread folders will not load up correctly in the software. So do not try to save it in another place. Uh, just in case or something. You have to save it in here. Just a warning. <laughs> if you mess it up, you'll probably need to reinstall the software. So it's going to ask us if we want to replace it, and that's fine. I didn't do any changes to any of the other floss colors. So I did that, and now I can hit close. And now, if I go up to palettes, and now if I hit add a thread, I can go to the thread family of DMC Satin, scroll down to the bottom, and I've got those two colors that I've added in. There we go. Okay, now we've got it in there. 
And now I want to flood fill it with the entire thing. Unfortunately, there's no way to show how evil it is and shiny, but it is in there. It is a full circle of metallic floss, which seems pretty horrible thing to do. So there we have how to make a circular design and also how to add a thread to your palette. I will not have to add this color ever again. It's going to stay in those threads. And the brown one I added a few days ago. So just so you know, you can close out the program and it's going to be in there fine. Just make sure that you don't save into a different folder. It needs to be in that threads folder so that Mac Stitch knows where to find its threads. Okay. So that is it for this time. I'm very tired. I need to go to bed. And um, as far as other videos go, I am working on some, but my kids have had no school all week. So I've been kind of busy entertaining them. But I've also been thinking about showing how I use um, Canva when I'm doing cross stitch design because I got a couple of fun things that I like to do there. But as always, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And I will see about getting around to that. Okay. Have a wonderful time stitching and designing. And thank you guys so much for subscribing. It's been really nice seeing how a lot of people seem to find this helpful. So I will continue to try to find things to help you with. Have a wonderful night. Good night.